Hello, I'm Chris and welcome back to my channel. It has been so long. I think over a year now, definitely, um, since my last video. I kind of left you guys hanging. I am so sorry, I can explain. I made this channel and then I made two videos and then I stopped. That's for a couple reasons. The first one is that it felt super vulnerable to put myself out there on the internet and have strangers be able to see it and comment. I think it threw me a little bit, if that makes sense. I am a very private person. And then on top of that, I started putting this insane pressure on myself after only two videos, which I don't think it was that serious. It took the joy out of reading for me. I wanted reading to kind of stay a hobby, so I just left. But this time around, I want it to be more relaxed. I want to make videos when I want to, not like, I need to do this and I need to read this. I want to very much read for pleasure and share with you guys. And that's what I wanted to do in the first place. So for this video, I wanted to talk about the spooky kind of eerie books that I read this August. I saw the Haunted Mansion movie, which while it wasn't great, um, it put me in the October spirit. And then I read a bunch of creepy-ish books and I want to talk about them. I've got my Edward Cullen shirt. I've got my coffee over here and I'm ready. What more, what more do you need? So the first book I read has been on my to read list for so long and I feel like a lot of other people have already read it. I think it won a Goodreads Choice Award, is that what they're called? And after watching The Haunted Mansion, I wanted like a creepy haunted house-esque book. So I read Mexican Gothic. A little bit about Mexican Gothic, the plot is that our protagonist, Noemi, she is this socialite kind of girl boss vibe who her kind of purpose is to find a husband, but she is very smart and very driven and things change when her family gets a very frantic letter from her cousin Constance who is a newlywed and in the letter her cousin Constance is like he's trying to poison me there's things in the walls of the house essentially this very eerie cryptic and frantic letter and so her dad is like I need you to go figure it out because you're closer with Constance you know girly things and you can figure out if it's kind of newlywed troubles or if there's something more and if you do this I'll let you go to college because Noemi wants to get her degree in anthropology. So she goes to see what's going on with her cousin Constance in this weird mansion and it kind of goes from there as we unravel the mystery of what's going on and is her cousin crazy, etc. I really enjoyed the book. It gave me the haunted house atmosphere that I was looking for after watching the very mediocre haunted mansion and I enjoyed it. I didn't, I wasn't obsessed with it, but it gave me what I wanted. I think my only issue with it was that once the reader kind of figures out what's going on, it was a little bit of a letdown for me. Other than that, it gave me the really great atmospheric gothic horror vibe that I was looking for, and I liked it. I think if you're in the market for something atmospheric, something spooky, something a little different in terms of the... Mm, I don't want to say too much without spoiling, but something a little different, then definitely check out Mexican Gothic. I'm glad I got to read this, and it was a good start to my spooky August. So the next one I read, I went for a little lighter book. Mm. <laughs> this one is definitely aimed for kids or preteens, not like five-year-olds, but definitely the younger kid range, but I still had a really great time with it. I've been meaning to read it for a while and I wasn't disappointed. It is the graveyard book. It is about this child named Nobody Owens whose family is murdered. So it starts off very dark, but he, as a baby, escapes to this graveyard and then the ghosts and undead of the graveyard agree to take him in and raise him as their own. There's actually this quote on the back that very much describes exactly what it felt like to me. It says, like a bite of dark Halloween chocolate, this novel proves rich, bittersweet, and very satisfying. And this is exactly what I felt like it was for me. It was very beautiful and whimsical, yet also eerie. It was the perfect little taste of Halloween, even though it's August, but it's never too early. So yeah, I really, really love this book and the ending made me a little emotional if I think about it too much. Mm. But yeah, if you're looking for something more on the lighter side, kind of a quick read, although it's like not the smallest book, it is very quick and there are some actual pictures in it. Let me show you. There's some like illustrations every once in a while that I thought added a really unique touch to the book. So yeah, that's the graveyard book. Super, super fan. The next book I read was The Shadow of the Wind. I know this is super popular right now and I started reading it because Benji had started it, but then he got to this one scene that freaked him out and he's very sensitive to horror things. And he was like, but it's so good, you should read it. So I 
tried. I know that a large majority of people are very much obsessed with it, saying it's like, it's gonna be a classic, it's iconic, and I'm sorry to say, I did not finish it, please don't kill me. I stopped around 200 pages because I just didn't want to slog through any more of it. I think chances are though, that a lot of you guys watching will really like this book because it seems to be very great for a lot of people, but for me, it felt very wordy. And I think my main issue was I didn't care to figure out kind of the mystery that was going on. I didn't feel any type of way about it. While there are a lot of parts of the book that are very lyrically beautiful, there's no doubt at all that this is an incredibly well-written book. The best way I can describe it is that it's like a triple chocolate cake and it's like super rich, but after a while, I couldn't keep eating it. Did that make any sense at all? That's how that's how it felt to me. So after a little bit, I I was just like, I, I don't want to read anymore. I'm sorry. I realized I didn't even describe the plot. So the plot is about this kid named Daniel and his dad is a bookkeeper. And one day his dad is like, I need to show you something, but you can never tell anyone. And he brings him to this cemetery of forgotten books, which is this labyrinth of a dusty dark library where there are a ton of books that they're kind of safe keeping. And he tells his son to pick out one book to keep safe forever. And he picks out this book called The Shadow of the Wind. And he reads it in one night. He's obsessed with the story. He's holding it so close to him. He really feels connected to it. And he starts looking for other books by the author, but he finds out that there's someone that has been searching out all of the books of this author and burning them. So the book is kind of him growing up and also keeping this book safe while this mysterious man is trying to get the book from him to burn it for unknown reasons that I will never know because I didn't finish. So. Also, this is a series, so I'm pretty sure there's four books and this is the first one. So if you enjoy this one, boy, do I have more for you. <laughs> so yeah, Shadow of the Wind did not finish. I'm sorry. Very unpopular. Please don't hate me. <laughs> the next book I read, well, it's not actually a book. It's a short story that a lot of my friends had to read in high school and maybe you did too, but I never had to read it and someone recommended it to me on my Instagram. So I read it. It is The Yellow Wallpaper. It's a very iconic piece of feminist literature that I really, really loved. The plot is about a wife who is experiencing potentially postpartum depression or some sort of mental health crisis. And her husband, who's a physician, is kind of just like, no, you just need to rest. Don't write, don't do anything. Just stay in this room with this ugly yellow wallpaper and rest. And essentially it's him gaslighting her so much. And I feel like men gaslighting women is a very prominent theme in Gothic literature. And it's so frustrating and so suffocating to read, but it's very important to read and to recognize. And yes, the short story was super creepy, but most of all, it just made me so sad. Just so sad for the woman involved as she's trapped in this room, slowly going crazy, staring at this yellow wallpaper. Oh, it was so, ugh. I really liked it, obviously. It's just very f frustrating and suffocating to read. And that's the point. So it did give me the creepy, I don't know what this is, but it gave me creepy, but more so just made me very upset. Super quick, I think like 35 pages and it's definitely important to read. So yeah, the yellow wallpaper. The next book I read isn't necessarily like super creepy, but it does have some spooky little queer elements. It's actually a book by my friend. We got an early copy. It is Gentle Chaos, Poems, Tales, and Magic by my friend Tyler. Um, I think it's coming out October 3rd. But yeah, I was super excited to read this, especially because Tyler's a close friend of mine and it didn't disappoint at all. I'm super, super proud of him. Gentle Chaos is kind of a collection of artwork, a collection of poems and anecdotes about Tyler and his childhood and about being queer and about things that he loves. And basically I mentioned this to him and in my Goodreads review, but it felt like I found this forbidden mirror that when I look into it, it kind of bears all of Tyler's soul to the reader. And it felt super, super intimate and really beautiful and super, I said super so many times felt very raw. And I'm including it in this video because Halloween is a big part of Tyler's childhood. And in the book, there are motifs about ghosts and fairies and a goblin that steals your socks and becomes you. So yeah, if you're into art and poetry, definitely check out Gentle Chaos. This isn't an ad or anything, I just really loved it. And it's been a while since I've read something so intimate and so queer in the best way. <laughs> Super proud of you, Tyler, if you're watching. 
And to finish up, the last creepy book I read is a good one to end off on. Um, I read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I don't have the physical book because I read it on my Kindle. But yeah, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It tells the story of this 18 year old girl who goes by the name Mary Cat and her and her agoraphobic sister and her wheelchair bound uncle all live in this house after their whole family other than them had been poisoned. They don't leave the house except for Mary Cat. Twice a week she goes into the village to kind of get groceries and get books and all of the villagers hate them. And the story unravels the killings and Mary Cat, the protagonist, is very morbid. What I found interesting about this book is that a lot of the creepiness factor didn't come so much from what happens, but from the dialogue and from the general sense of unease and claustrophobia but i thought it was super interesting kind of figuring out what happened to the family seeing how they go about their day-to-day -day life and having an unreliable narrator is also something that i find really fascinating and shirley jackson's prose is so unmatched i was so enthralled by her writing style i think it was a great way to end this kind of creepy book kick that i was on and i really enjoyed it so those are the spooky ish books that I read this month. I have since moved on to some cozy fantasy books as some of these were a little heavy for me. So my next video might be reading some cozy book recommendations because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of taking some cozy books from different booktuber recommendations and reading them. So maybe that'll be my next video. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you read any of these or if you have read any of these or what you think. And I'm excited for Halloween. So it's not too early to start. So yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye. I don't know what that was. Bye.